Before I start, well, first of all, it's great to be here. Um, I'm a complete TEDx virgin. I've never been to one of these things before, so you'll have to help me through. Um, the list of speakers today is quite a cool one, and I'm honored to be a part of it. Um, makes me think kind of that I might be a clerical error, but I'm going to give it my best shot. Uh, <clears throat> um, Rise of the Machines. I'm a sci-fi fan, so I, I, I immediately latched onto this theme. Um, I grew up liking these things, and uh, and it is a, an appropriate thing for me because I had this thing. Um, in in movie um, history, we've seen a lot of machines rise up and uh, try to enslave us all. We had the Terminators, we had the old Cylons, and we had the new Cylons who actually made me reconsider my objections to the whole enslavement thing. <clears throat> um, I was a big fan of that show, by the way. I don't know if you guys watched the, the new Battlestar Galactica, but it was excellent. Um, anyway, the fact is that the, the machines will rule the world. I'm fairly convinced of that. Um, but it's not going to happen with them rising in revolt, as we saw in these movies. It, what's going to happen, actually, is that people are going to sell the, these things to us, and we're going to all line up to buy them. Um, and that basically, this is kind of what my little talk's going to be about here today. It's about the mindset of these people, because um, I think anyone who makes or markets the machines, which I think is probably a lot of us in this room, uh, or at least we're enthusiasts, uh, would benefit from really understanding uh, part of the reason why Apple is such a success today. Um, <clears throat> And Apple is, as we all know, the, the, the one company that has consistently uh, created this lust in people's minds. Uh, you have to have their, their thing. And, and that's because they're really uh, good at giving people the thing that people naturally respond to. It's simplicity, basically. And this is a principle that, that Steve Jobs really embraced forever. And he drilled into uh, to Apple and and really burnt it into Apple's DNA. So Apple would never in a million years consider making that uh, remote control to the left. Uh, they only do things that are elegant and simple, and that, uh, that appeals to the basic uh, human desire for simplicity. So we have this, this principle, um, and it's really uh, a very simple one, which is if you have uh, two ways to achieve a similar result, and one of them is simpler and one of them is more complicated. You choose the simpler one. This is the thing that Apple uses when they, when they look at everything they do, really. You, you think that it's just the products that you see, but it's really the way they organize and the way they advertise and the way they talk to their customers, the way they sell in retail. There's this principle, this lens through which they see everything they do, and that strikes this chord with people. I was walking through Times Square last summer and I saw this on a bus and I thought, it, it actually is an interesting lesson. I am not a McDonald's customer um, and I don't drink coffee. And yet it made me smile because I thought, how simple can you get? Uh, first of all, it's not $5 like Starbucks. Second of all, you know, how much does it cost them really to make a coffee this big versus that big? It's probably like minuscule, the difference. Um, but you have to like the company for doing that, and this is an important point about simplicity. When you give people something that they can relate to very simply and clearly, they like you more. And that's going to come into our conversation a little bit later, but I actually liked McDonald's for a brief moment. <laughs> um, I didn't go into one, but you know, if you did this, like Apple has done this repeatedly over the years, if McDonald's did things like this you know, every week, every month, for 10 or 20 years, you would feel very differently about them, um, assuming their food got better. Uh, <clears throat> this is the cover of the insert that was done for the very first Apple product, uh, the Apple II. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And this is actually a quote from Leonardo da Vinci. But it's an interesting thing about simplicity in general, which is um, 
or Apple style, I should say, because they're, it's not about dumbing things down. If you simplify things as well as Apple has done, um, it's a very sophisticated thing. It's not like you're getting less capability. Uh, and the great thing about this line is that it's very authentic to Apple, uh, everything it's done over the years. You could literally put those, those words over every product they've ever made. You could put that over an iPad and it would certainly make sense. <clears throat> Steve Jobs said this uh, some number of years ago, actually quite a few years ago, but he was talking about um, simplicity being difficult to, to attain, that it takes all this work. But his point was that it's worth it in the end because when you get there, you can move mountains. And I think this is uh, certainly has been borne out by the fact that Apple has become the most valuable company on the face of the earth. In fact, they went from near bankruptcy in 1997 when Steve came back to most valuable on earth, which is pretty remarkable. And it's because they, because they believe in this, and this is uh, really one of the things that, drives, that drove Steve. So here's a question for you. Where does simplicity come from? Um, some people would look at Apple's products uh, and say that uh, that's, you know, that's simplicity. That's why Apple is, is uh, as successful as they've been. It's actually completely wrong because you can't make products like that unless your whole company believes in simplicity. So as I mentioned before, simplicity kind of runs throughout uh, Apple's different departments. Um, and Steve would, would you know, be the one who saw everything and approved everything and put the fear of God in people. Um, he wanted the company to run this way, so uh, ideas were protected from start to finish. You end up with these amazing products uh, because the whole company believes in simplicity. So those companies who are out there uh, trying to copy Apple's products to become successful are really getting only a tiny, tiny bit of it. They need to be copying Apple, the company, which is a much harder thing to do. It's a, it's a company that believes in simplicity through and through. Um, what the hell does that mean, you might ask? Well, <laughs> it's uh, the reason, you know, where does this obsession with simplicity come from? Obviously it came from Steve Jobs, but it was because something he used to say to us quite often was, you know, you, you deal with all these little things every day, uh, but at the end of the day, he said, I just want people to love us. People need to love the Apple brand. So every little thing we do adds up. And the more people love us, uh, the more they will come back and buy more products, the more they will evangelize to their friends and family and colleagues, and they'll be willing to pay a few extra bucks too, uh, which is you know, the secret of Apple's success. They, they, people perceive that they get more, so they're willing to pay more. So his way of connecting with people, of creating this love, was being simple because um, simplicity is such a part of being a human being, and he wanted to connect with people on that level and, and reinforce this connection. Um, it's something that Apple does not only in the products they make, but in the way they sell products, and this is where uh, it gets kind of interesting, <clears throat> in the event that it hadn't been interesting to you yet. If you were looking for a laptop, uh, you might go to Dell and take a look at their model, see what they have to offer. So Dell has a few models. They've got 42 distinct models of laptop. Um, and they come with these absurd names, too, I might add. That's subject for a whole other talk one day. But uh, Apple is very sensible with their naming. These guys give you Inspirons, XPSs, Alienwares, Vostros, Latitudes, Precisions. None of them make any kind of sense. They don't relate to each other or to the Dell brand. But that aside, 42 models is pretty ridiculous. Now, I, I did this research personally. I'm very proud of it. Just uh, last week, this is brand new. But you can't find those models in one place. You have to go through all through their site, the business section, the consumer section, the education section. Um, and I have no idea what the difference between a 6220 and a 6230 is. There may be some screen size differences. But you can see in the XPSs, they have screen sizes. But the other numbers are meaningless, and they all came with a set of specs. And to be honest, I got too dizzy to, to research it further. Um, but feel free. <laughs> Um, anyway, so what about HP? Can they do any better than Dell? Well, yes, they can, as a matter of fact. They give you 49 distinct models. Um, and again, they have such fantastic naming. You can get Envies and Sleek Books and Elite Books and all kinds of books, uh, pavilions, the entertainment. Uh, they, what is it, they have the, um, 
You can get a quad edition or a select edition, and I have no idea what a quad is or what a select is, but they're giving you all those choices. And of course, Apple, uh, which does its simplicity thing, you've got six models, and I'm actually being generous. The Retina model is really part of the Pro model. I, I think there's really four models, but I'm being a sport. Uh, six versus 42 and 49, it's pretty darn good. Um, so I did a lot of work with Dell, and uh, a couple of years worth anyway, and I, every time I had a chance, I would say to them, like, you know, and, and they would always envy, oh, I use that word, envy, HP. Um, they would envy Apple's whole, you know, simplicity thing, basically, and, and so I'd say, well, why do you need all those models? And they would say, well, as you might expect, it's about choice. We have a lot of different kinds of customers. We have corporate customers and individuals, and they all have different needs, and we want, you know, make everybody happy and give them all these choices. Well, bullshit, actually. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I didn't check and make sure I'm allowed to use words like that. Um, oh, we're okay? Good. I promise I won't do it again. Uh, but it, it's ridiculous because uh, people don't need that amount of choice. I'm all in favor of choice. I think everyone likes choice, but uh, you don't need 42 or 49 models. That's like a bit ridiculous. It becomes confusing. The big question is, does anyone ever go away from Apple feeling like they had a lack of choice. Um, I would say they, they felt a lack of confusion. Um, you buy, uh, you know, an Air or a Pro, thin or full-featured, and when you click on that, you pick the things you want in it. Uh, I don't think anyone goes away saying, damn, I wish they gave me more choice. Another bit of evidence you might consider is that Apple makes more money than Dell and HP combined, and throw in a couple of other PC companies as well. Um, they make the hugest part of the, of the profit of the industry. So they're doing something right, you know, and these other guys are doing something wrong, and they don't seem to ever pick up on that. Although you might uh, be interested to know, I actually got an email a couple of months ago from Michael Dell himself. The subject line was, great book, two exclamation points. And I thought that was odd because I really do a lot of slamming of him in the book. Uh, because in my experience wasn't the best there. Um, but he thought it was so great, he's got his marketing people reading it and all that, and they invited me in to speak next year, and I'm, I'm, I'm already kind of savoring my, what I will say to those guys, it'll be a lot of fun. But anyway, HP and Dell do their throw it all against the wall and see what'll stick routine, and Apple is very focused. Um, here's another example. Of, you're buying some uh, tunes, and this is a little old, but it's just an interesting example, I think. Apple, as you know, owned the, I, the music market with iPod and iTunes. They have like 80% of it still to this day, maybe 70, 75%. Um, and that's because they did things, they made it very easy for you. They made it like a buck a song. If you bought five songs, it was about five bucks. You pay your five bucks, you go on your merry way, and you have a balance of zero. Microsoft, in its... Uh, Infinite Wisdom went with Microsoft Points. And uh, they were around before uh, the Zune came out, and I believe they're still around because Xbox is based on the Microsoft Points system. But in their case, you'd have to, uh, $1 was equal to 80 points. Um, so basically, you'd have to buy them in certain lots, so you'd pay 10 bucks and get 800 points. The interesting thing was a song equals 79 points, but when you do the math, that equals 99 cents. So it's the same price as Apple, but they, they do it for 79 versus 99. So the minute you look behind the curtain on that one, you get really mad at Microsoft for trying to fool you. So it's not simple, it's not clean. You don't like Microsoft for doing that. You like McDonald's more for their dollar cup of coffee. But in this case, you'd buy your five songs for 395 points. You'd have a balance of 405 points. Um, it's kind of just a big mess. And, and by the way, the, um, I, I always imagine what goes on in these rooms uh, because I think someone had to have that idea about doing the points and we're going to really, you know, attack iPod on this one. Steve Jobs said back in the days of Next that you, if you're going to do something, it's got to, you know, if you want to be noticed, it has to be a 10x improvement over what came before. Incremental improvement doesn't work so well. Well, I would say that those Microsoft points were probably like a 5x unimprovement, you know, but, but it started in some room somewhere where someone did it on a whiteboard or something and everyone said, yeah, good idea. 
Um, and then you think at a company like Microsoft, there must have been like at least five or ten more meetings where people sat around a table and looked at this scheme, and all of them said, whoa, yeah, great, Microsoft points, let's do it. And it's just kind of amazing because there's a total lack of common sense. I, I mean, anyone could look at that and say it's too convoluted. Why don't we just charge them for the song and take their money? Um, rather than playing with the float and taking too much money and all that. But being simple isn't simple. And that's uh, been very true uh, at Apple because they work really, really hard to do what they do. And Steve used to always talk about peeling away the layers of the onion. You start with a great idea, but then you peel away the layers and get, get at something really good. You need to be not only focused on simplicity, but you need to focus uh, on defending simplicity against the dark forces of complexity because they're all around you. There are people who want to create Microsoft points and offer 49 models of computers. So uh, Apple, that's interesting. Um, it's the ultimate competitive WEPO. Uh, <laughs> perhaps you can extrapolate what that's supposed to mean. Um, Really, it, it, sets, it sets people apart, and uh, it, Apple's love of simplicity is really what has been their, their point of difference between uh, them and all their competitors all these years. Um, and again, I'm, I'm sort of shocked that people don't notice this and say, like, we could, let's try that ourselves. But, you know, it takes just an awful lot of commitment, time, and money to be as simple as Apple is. Um, I do think that... Uh, Steve Jobs made an incredible success of um, Apple because he recognized that indeed the machines would be rising, but he was smart enough to realize that um, it was going to be um, simple machines that really win the day. Um, and that's really about it, and that's also not right. <laughs> <laughs> the slides have not been the best part of this presentation, but uh, that is it, and I thank you for listening so politely. Thank you.